Does a protest cross the line? The arrests of TD Paul Murphy and others over behaviour at recent protests have focused attention on what is and is not acceptable in terms of legitimate protesting. High profile incidents such as the Thornish of being trapped in her car and the President being verbally abused cast a shadow over all protests. So has protesting turned more nasty in recent times or was it always thus? Here's Primetime's political correspondent Katie Hannan. Two death threats, one on my office phone. Then there was another uh, message left on my Facebook page threatening to kill me, saying that they'd murder me with a hacksaw on my face, slow blood down. Gone to funerals of families and members of the families would refuse to shake hands with me. Some fellow would want to inflict as much physical damage as he could on you. That I should be killed or I should be visiting my house and given a good hiding. And another Facebook page, one of the comments was that I should be hung and burnt. Things like I should have been aborted, that I'm a stupid, see you next Tuesday. Comments made about my appearance, how I look, you know, my weight. I was sent a picture of a dildo and told to go F myself. Put a bullet through my head, they'd burn me out of my house. Some of our politicians are being subjected to extraordinary levels of vitriol in person and increasingly online, with death threats and crude sexual commentary now commonplace. I've had written on my office window, child abuser, and this is something that I can't imagine taking place in the past. Somebody would write something as nasty and outrageous as that on, on uh, the office of a public representative. But that's the sort of thing that you get on the on your social media as well. Um, very personal, aggressive, nasty and vindictive language that is used to demean and to abuse. It is the, I suppose it is the modern cyberbullying that is taking place at all levels, but certainly public representatives get a lot of it. Frank Fein has felt the brunt of public anger and been embroiled in controversy himself since he supported the closure of Roscommon Hospital's emergency department. I'd be going into my house, it was in a rural area, I'd ring a friend of mine or I'd say, look, I'm going in the door, in case anything happens, contact the guards immediately. And um, after a while you decided, God, why, not, why bother going out to that rural location? You'd stay over your office. Uh, where it was in the town, which was much safer. And these were little things. You didn't bother going to pubs anymore. Uh, you didn't bother going to places that you felt that there would be intimidation because it just wasn't worth, worth the effort. So you were actually basically frightened out of, out of your own home? Well, I suppose you took precautions. Uh, because there was such a level of resentment. It got so bad at one point, my father sat me down and asked me, did I really want to, did I really want to reconsider my position as a public representative? Because it does have an effect on your family and on close friends. And you know, I had to, there are days that I stop and think about it. And I say, in any other job, this would not happen. So why are we tolerating it in politics? Longtime campaigner Bernie Hughes does not condone online abuse. But she does believe social media has fundamentally altered the nature of protest for the better. It's connected communities. People see now what's happened in Dublin um, two minutes as it's happening, or what's happening in Cork, what's happening in um, you know, uh, Mayo, what's happening right across the country. People are standing up. And while um, our national broadcaster doesn't always show what's going on, in um, Ireland, you know, social media is. Of course, some of those protests have included some highly confrontational and controversial incidents. The leadership, I think, has known us to ensure that people, the people who are engaging in those protests, that um, there are guidelines, that there are standards of behaviour that must be adhered to, and that they should not be shouting, taunting, shouting abuse and roaring at people putting megaphones and cameras into people's faces uh, and generally engaging in, in very, very difficult behaviour for ordinary personnel going about their business. And that is the one element that I have seen that is quite different from the protests that I've been engaged on over the decades. If you saw your daughter being pushed by a burly guard for no reason and the footage is there to prove that, how would you feel? 
or if you're being told by an undercover uh, detective, go and get a job, okay? Or you're told by guards, uh, pass comment about how you look, how heavy you are, okay? That type of um, reaction from guards to people and the way they speak to people at protests can annoy people, let's say. With recent arrests intensifying the row over the definition of a peaceful protest, or indeed what constitutes political policing, it's worth noting that we've been here before, with angry protests, arrests, accusations against the Gardaí, and politicians on the firing line. Indeed, Joe Costello himself was arrested during a blockade of O'Connell Street by street traders in 1985. Well, there was never any question of imprisonment of anybody or intimidation of anybody and it was a spontaneous thing that was done by the women and I went along in solidarity. Meanwhile, back in the trenches of cyberspace, Senator Higgins has decided enough is enough. Next month she will publish new legislation to tackle online abuse. Malicious communications, be that through letter or electronic communications, if it's designed to, to cause fear or anxiety in, in a person. And that's not just politicians, it's people right throughout the country or any victim. That was Katie Hannan reporting there. I'm joined by Pat Rabbit and Ruth Coppinger. Pat Rabbit, looking there even, you know, at Joe Costello, I mean, protests happened in the past, people got arrested, they got jailed. Is anything that very different today? Well, we've always had protests and... I hope we always will. Uh, we had ten times as many people on the streets in the great tax PAYE marches of the late 70s as we've had on the water issue. But there was none of the nastiness associated with it, which is now par for the course. You know, politicians being targeted, uh, ministers not enabled to do their jobs, people's clinics being picketed, uh, People's clinics being stormed, like happened uh, Catherine Byrne, TD, uh, happened Eric Byrne. Uh, people's homes being picketed, like happened Minister Pascal O'Donoghue and, and others. And then this vicious, relentless, obnoxious, scurrilous stream of abuse All on right. social media. And I'll come back to that, but it's just even Katie there showing images, I suppose, from protests in the past. They were scenes of violence, there were arrests. I mean, to that extent, is that very different? We'll come to the online in, in a it moment. Is, it is entirely different uh, than the selective targeting of public figures that's going on at the moment. Uh, you know, we've always had protest, of course, but the character of the protest has changed. Uh, you know, some, of, uh, some colleagues have had to abandon their clinics because they are regularly the focus of okay. abuse uh, by uh, picketers and uh, the way party staffs are treated by callers into party offices okay. is something that in over 30 years I have never seen anything like it. Okay, Ruth, looking there, even say Lorraine Higgins getting that dildo and a really rude comment, I mean, do you accept that there is a very nasty core to some, not all of them, but to some of the protests going on? Well, anyone who's elected or in the public eye, we all get abusive messages and so on sent to us, all of us. But there was a huge focus in that video on the discomfort of politicians. And I'm not really particularly concerned about that. We're elected, we put ourselves out there. And why people are so angry is, and it, these are politicians who betrayed in particular the promises on the water charges, on austerity, and child benefit cuts and so on. I hear that, but, but let me come back and point. Even Lorraine Higgins are saying her father is suggesting she needs to consider whether or not this is a career she should proceed with. I mean, no matter what you do in your life, if you're a politician, a public representative, why would anyone go forward to be a public representative if you're going to get your home picketed and get incredibly nasty things both online and through the post? Why would well, you do it? Yeah, I, I wouldn't condone any nasty yeah. personal abuse. But the idea of a clinic being picketed, I mean, that's standard procedure. That's a public your office. Homes? No, I, I don't think, and that's no, rarely and done. The, the clinic but is that standard procedure the, where you have uh, the, people from the people clinic, before profit. The clinic is uh, where you have your office. Storming and you, you, into uh, Catherine Byrne, for example. The abuse of the Garda Shikana going about their business. A, a young woman Garda being subjected to the kind of abuse about, you know what we're going to do to you, or we know where you live. 
meter workers for uh, Irish water okay, let come being back on that. only unable yeah, to do their job. Okay, come back. The key point here: what's going on in the last? But what about Pat Rabbit's points there? Some of the points he I, just I, made. I think a clinic is a public office of, a, of anybody, and that's that. I mean, a minister, a TD, or whatever. But what's going on in the last couple of days? What people are more concerned about is dawn raids on the homes of elected of representatives of the anti-austerity alliance, but also ordinary working class people in Jobstown. A 16-year-old visited by 10 Gardaí. Nothing happened to the HSBC tax evaders. And there is a concerted attempt by the media and by this kind of thing that we've seen on the video to undermine and attack the democratic right of people to protest and to protest in an effective okay, manner. Well, I, think nobody can, so uh, I think nobody can blame RTE for not showing the anger. Uh, RTE has done very little else in the case of Irish Water, radio and television. I'm still waiting for RTE to do a program about the dysfunctional I Irish water infrastructure and the huge investment that will have to be raised yeah. in order to fix it. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, kind of, uh, you know, people being snatched at 7 o'clock in the morning from the bosoms of their families and it being alleged it's political policing. Okay, well, politicians, I Miriam, everybody po knows it's po political politicians okay, Miriam, had yeah. nothing to do with I'll that. And quite frankly... Uh, I get the impression from Paul Murphy and some of his, uh, his colleagues they'd like to be snatched from the bosom of their families every Monday morning. It would give them more uh, oxygen uh, Before I let for, for Ruth their back, particular now, what about the point, Pat Rabbit, that people are very, very angry. If they stand outside peacefully, dull air with a placard, nobody's going to listen to them. And maybe they've been driven to desperate measures and a level of nastiness because they're so desperate. But, Miriam, I, I've seen uh, the... Uh, recession of the 70s and the recession of the 80s and people protested and as I've already said there were 10 that. times more people on the streets what, what, but what, it's the personal bothering? vindictive, personal vindictive. Uh, okay. nasty yeah. and uh, you know when, when Ruth says that she doesn't want it discussed about politicians. I don't recall any programme before ventilating this subject. Do, it this, seems to me it's the, the, a reasonable subject very okay. to have ventilated. Yeah. What's happened in the last couple of days in particular, there's been an attempt to attack the democratic right to protest, to undermine the anti-water charges movement at a key time when the bills are pending, going to be dropping in people's homes, faced with the prospect of building mass non-payment of those bills, which will defeat the government and will be a very serious blow to them but also to undermine a whole community in Jobstown. Tonight there's a meeting taking place in West Halla. They've agreed to call a protest at the Department of Justice on Thursday okay. at 6.30. And I, I think Can that... Can I start with a moment? Because we do, to be fair, as Papa Ivory said, we cover the protests all the time. The question of social media, I mean, you must have experienced it yourself, mm -hmm. the level of nastiness and vitriol that everyone who's on social media experiences sometime, but it seems to be grotesque in relation to public representatives is that acceptable? There, there's a downside to social media, there's no doubt about it. But is it. that acceptable? No, of course it's not. The and is that translating just into real life? I often wonder, do people think when they then just walk up to Ruth Coppinger, what they've said to you online, they now feel they can say to your face? And, and it isn't just for TDs, it goes on in lots of pages. It's not just aimed at TDs. People but is it find acceptable? themselves being abused, even protest pages, etc. No, of course it's not acceptable. I mean, if but, we can... The, but what I'd say is there's a positive I'll to social media. It has allowed people. I, I would take issue. I, yeah. I think RTE latterly covered the anti-water charges movement, but it took a long time for them okay. to do so, and it has allowed communities to organise protests in a way that wasn't possible before. Yeah. I think it's very important that people can peacefully protest in this country, that the protests are not taken over by elements who want to create mayhem and division. Uh, people who want to insult the guard, they make the execution of their duties impossible, spitting at them, calling them names, surrounding the president, who has no role, good, bad or indifferent, in respect of Irish water, except to sign the bill. He has no other role in it. I think uh, it's so the first naive, time though. in the history of this country that the president was dragged into it. Uh, other politicians okay. are habitually to, to dragged into it. The insults never and, took, um, took place in protests you know. in the good old days is, is ludicrous. Of course, the angry protests have taken place. Charles Hall, he was detained in UCD in 1989 by students, by the way, in a sit-down protest, and he had to be escorted by Gardaí. Okay. You have, took part, by the way, in 1972 always. in a whole load of student of protests. I, I, and I've a lot seen later you. than 1972. And they, were, they included sit-down protests just like the people of Jobstown did. The students difference now always. is that you're at the receiving end of them no. because you're now part of no, the elite no, of the no, establishment no. and you're no longer on the side of the oppressed who are protesting. No, not at all. That's I why it upsets you I so much. I continue to support...
the right to protest, and of course students always protested. It's the character, the nastiness, that is okay. the ugliness, the environment that has been created by a small okay. number... Would you call on the Gardaí to call uh, off their uh, harassment uh, of the people of Jokes? I would call on you and your fellow travellers to call off the abuse of the Gardaí Síochána who are doing their job and the people who get up in the morning to go to work it's, to install meters for Irish waters. It's extremely political for the Guardian to spend this amount of resources doing their job. following up on a small protest in which the tarnish was okay. attained for two hours. Well look, Pat Rabbit, Will Coppinger, I appreciate you both coming in and discussing it tonight.